Welcome to another episode of our Toy Box Tutorial Series. Today I'm going to show you the Ballot Box Creativa Toy. So let's go take a look. Well here's the Ballot Box Toy. In a nutshell, it's used to give your players a choice between two things. Whether it's because of a vote, or maybe you want them to choose between two doors, but you don't want them to be able to actually go through both. This is the toy to do it with. Uh, let's take a quick look at the basics of the toy. Its properties, there are only two, and you can set a target number of votes for each choice. I don't use that very often, but it's there in case you want to, instead of whoever gets the most votes, you can say whichever option gets to a certain number first wins. Next, we're going to look at the outgoing logic. Uh, there's actually quite a few things that can go out from this toy. You have target number of A votes reached, target number of B votes reached, the A majority tally, the B majority tally, and the tally tied. So if you wanted to have an actual vote, you can say if A wins, open this door. And then as a separate connection, you'd say if B wins, open the other door. And then I usually have a tally tied tied into redoing the vote in case there's a tie. Now let's take a look at what we can put into the toy. And I'm going to use a button for that. So new logic connection stepped on. Now we're going to, just to show you what I'm talking about, we're going to go with player one. If we're going in here, we're going to have cast A vote, cast B vote, tally results and reset. Now before we get into the votes themselves, these two are very important. The toy won't actually send a tallied result message unless something tells it to tally the results. In other words, it doesn't matter if choice A has the most votes. If nothing tells the toy to tally the results, it won't know that choice A1. Now, if you're using a target instead of a, of actual vote tally, whichever choice reaches its target, the toy will do what it's supposed to. And then reset. If you're going to be doing this more than once, you have to have uh, some toy reset the vote. So how you get the toy to know who's voting for what? Well, that's where you get cast A and cast B vote. Now, I've already picked player one, so let's just say cast A. Now you have a choice of all these ballots. It actually has a choice of 10. In this case, since it's player one, we're going to call it ballot one. And what this will do is when I step on that button, I will be casting a vote for choice A in ballot slot one. Doing it this way, you would only need two triggers, one for choice A and one for choice B. And then you can set each ballot slot up for each individual player on that button. Now that I've showed you the basics of this toy, let's go take a look at something a little more complicated. So this is the ballot we've set up. Uh, what it's for is ch letting the players choose between two rewards whenever they succeed at something. So let's take a look at the logic. Uh, the three buttons in front of us are going to be for casting and tallying the votes. Back there is the logic for the instructions. Uh, the locators are where the rewards will appear. And back here we have the logic for actually generating the rewards. Uh, one box for each capsule and the logic for generating the right number of capsules. So let's go ahead and see how it works. Uh, this button here is for casting vote A. And that button over there is for casting vote B. Right now we have it set up for only one player. Uh, but... For each player that is going to be playing, all you have to do is set up uh, their vote mechanism on each button. So all the players will have their vote A on this button. So player 2, cast vote A in ballot 2, and so on and so forth for each of the players. And then you'll do their vote B over on the other, ballot, on the other bo button. And then here's where we're tally. So let's just go ahead and show you how it works real quick. Left for health or right for power. Vote now. So if I want health, I'll come over here and vote. Everybody's voted, so we'll tally the votes. And health appears. Now let's say you have a tie, 
but your system really does require one or the other vote to win. Well, you're going to have to put something in that tells your players no ties. And so to show you that, what I've done, uh, I'm just not going to vote for anything. And that means both will have zero, and that counts as a tie. So in this system, it just says you failed, try again. So instead of any of that going off, we have said if there's a tie, bypass everything and say that. Uh, you don't have to do that, but the problem is, is if you tally the votes and there is a tie and your system doesn't have anything that will happen on a tie, nothing will happen and your players will get confused. And we don't want confused players. The other very important thing to note, and we're going to start this over again, uh, each ballot can only hold one vote. So if I come over here as player one and vote for health, and then I come over here and vote for power, you would think that that would make a tie. But in reality, it will give me power. Because when I came over here and voted for power, it erased my vote for health. Uh, that's something important to remember. Uh, if you set it up this way, then you cannot, uh, each player cannot cast more than one vote. Uh, their vote, their, only their last vote will count. Well, that's it for the basics of the Ballot Box Creativity Toy. If you have any questions about it or anything else you saw in the video, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll answer them as soon as I can. And if you learned something new today, don't forget to give the video a like. We put out videos every week on Sundays and Wednesdays, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.